Hi, I'm Danny and these are my diecast disasters. In this video, I'm going to restore and customize two Hot Wheels Cruise Ooze Coops. These were produced from 2004 until 2009. One of these is this red one. It's the original Hot Wheels one that was released in 2004. I'm pretty sure this one's missing some flame stickers from the rear. And this black version is the McDonald's version, which was given away with a Happy Meal in 2004. Wouldn't mind it of getting that Happy Meal when I was a little kid. This version has an LED in it that lights up, and there's a little on-off switch on the base. Let's take our little cruise coops off of the turntable and take a closer look. Looking at the original Hot Wheels one first. It's not in the worst shape ever, but it's definitely play worn with its missing stickers, chipped paint job and missing chrome on the bumper. The wheels are in pretty good condition. It's actually got a quite a cool base on it with those pipes and stuff. And now taking a look at our Happy Meal car. Still got its stickers on this one. Again, it's not in too bad a shape. Just a little bit of play wear. It's actually probably got more paint on it than the Hot Wheels original. And you can see the little on off switch underneath. The LED light isn't working, so hopefully we can fix that up. Another thing worth noting is that the body on the Happy Meal car is one part, whereas the Hot Wheels one is two parts. And you can also see that the Happy Meals one has a different size windscreen. So as with the majority of cars, the first step is to drill out the rivets and take them apart. They actually pretty stubborn these ones often these plastic bases are but these were particularly stubborn There's a third very shallow rivet here holding the two body parts together. I've had to use a burr on my Dremel to remove the last of all of these rivets. They've all been very stubborn. Now with the cars taken apart, I can move on and remove the paint from the cast parts with some poly stripper. Here they are with the paint removed. 
pretty tidy castings. There's not much oxidation or anything on them. I can now use a wire brush on my rotary tool to remove any remaining scraps of paint and any of the oxidation that is on the castings. I'm going to be using a see-through candy paint on the Hot Wheels one. So I use some polishing compound and a buffing wheel on my rotary tool to bring the body parts to a high shine. It's so shiny, you can see my face in it. I'm not going to be painting the whole of the base in candy, so I focus mainly on the side panels. Now that my parts have a nice shine to them, I give them three coats of this Vallejo Candy Red. I then mask off the side panels of the lower section and I paint the rest of it in a less glossy black. For the McDonald's car, I start by giving it a base coat of black. And I then paint it with this Mission Models Color Change Blue. While those are curing, I move on to the bases. This is the base of the Hot Wheels one. I'm just going to remove the wheels first by cutting out one of the tabs. With the wheels removed, I can move on and remove the chrome from the base. I do this by soaking it for a few minutes in some water with a little bit of caustic soda in it. Here we can see all the chrome is completely gone. I give it a coat of black paint. I detail in the grill and silver. And finally, I apply some metallic weathering powders underneath to bring out the details.
Looking at the McDonald's base now, you can see the little on off switch and here is the little LED setup. I begin by popping out the old batteries. Hopefully I just have to replace these and it should work again. Right, let's see if it goes. There it is, it's a green LED. So this base is painted black and given the same metallic weathering powder treatment. I finish both bases with a satin varnish. Now for the windscreens, this is a large clear section from the McDonald's car, there's actually nothing wrong with that apart from a little bit of rust gunk on it. The black windscreen from the Hot Wheels version has a bit of pitting in it so I give it a quick sand and then a polish. I then give both of the windscreens a really thorough wash in some hot soapy water. I finish the black Hot Wheels windscreen with a little bit of blue metallic weathering powder. I then give it a coat of gloss clear. You can hardly see the wheels on these models so I'm just going to stick with the original wheels. I don't like the chrome finish so I paint them in a dark steel and that's it. Now I've actually grabbed the wrong rear wheels there. I do realise this and swap them out for the right ones later on. Here are all of our Cruise Ooze Coupe parts refurbished and repainted and ready to go back together. I'm really happy with the way these paint jobs have turned out. I've drilled and tapped the rivet posts on this McDonald's version and put some screws in so that if the batteries went flat again it would be easy to swap them out. Before we take a look at the finished car though, I'm going to make a nice base for them to sit on. I start by carving out some concrete slabs from a piece of foam. This was airbrushed grey. I then applied some washes to it made out of black paint and water. I applied about two or three layers of this wash until I was happy. Next I dry brushed the cracks just a little bit with some white paint. I'm going to use these Vallejo fuel and oil stain paints to make a few oil stains here and there. I'm focusing around this area because this is where the roller door is going to be on the backdrop. Once the oil stains are dried, I added some weathering powders to the concrete slabs. It was black and some brown. I'm now going to add a little bit of grass here and there. I apply a little bit of PVA glue into some of the cracks and chips in the concrete. I then use my static grass applicator to apply some grass.
I'm pretty happy now with my concrete base so I'm going to make an old garage backdrop for it. I start by cutting out this piece of styrene brick texture. I've made a little bit of a rough support at the rear here. Probably could have done a better job of that but it doesn't matter too much. Next I paint the bricks with a base coat of this ready brown. I then mix together a small amount of milliput. I water it right down and I rub it into all of the cracks and the bricks and leave it overnight to set. This is going to mimic some mortar. I want to put some big painted signs on my brick wall. Here's a garage sign I designed in Photoshop and some old oil signs that I've printed out. I cut out the signs that I'm going to use and I sand the paper down as thin as I can. I use a nice sharp scalpel blade to cut out my signs from the paper. Before I stick it onto the walls I'm just going to sand the edges a little bit. I should have actually done this from the other side. I've learned this technique from Jason Jensen Trains. He does some absolutely stunning building models. He's also much better at this technique than me. I paint the back of my thinned down sanded paper sign with some slightly watered down PVA glue. And now I can stick it onto my brick wall. I repeat this method for a few more of the signs and for my big garage sign. Now I'm going to start weathering them. I first start by dabbing a sponge in a little bit of the base colour that I used. And then I'm going to dab that here and there over my signs. I add another couple of shades of brownie colour as well. Next I add some weathering powders. These are just ground up pastels that I'm using. First of all is a dirty dusty shade. I next use more of a rusty looking shade and I finish with some black.
now to add a roller door to my garage I cut out my roller door from some styrene sheet I begin by painting it in light steel. I'm next going to add some rusty paint. I'm using a very dark rust texture and then a lighter one. And I finish off my roller door with some weathering powders. I'm using a rust one and then I apply a black one. So after quite a bit of work, our diorama and cars are assembled and ready to take a look at. But just before we do, we better take a look back and be reminded of what we started with. Here is our Hot Wheels Cruise Ooze Coupe from 2004. It's a pretty nice colour, but it's looking fairly beat up and play worn. So let's see if we can give it a makeover. And here it is, our finished customised Hot Wheels Cruise Ooze Coupe. It's been painted in a nice glossy candy red and then given some matte black detailing. I always like the way this Vallejo candy red comes out. It's really cool looking and the satiny matte black detailing really makes it stand out. And here is our McDonald's Happy Meal Cruise Ooze Coupe. It's not quite as play worn as the Hot Wheels one, but those old stickers looking pretty shabby, and the black doesn't do a lot for it. Also, the LED isn't working anymore. And here it is after our custom makeover. The boring old black paint job has been replaced with this interesting metallic-y blue. This is the colour change blue sprayed quite heavily over a black base. It's also had a little bit of detailing put in the bumper and those side pipes on the motor. Also the LED now works, although I really couldn't get it to show on my camera working so sorry I can't really show you any footage of that. Now I'll give a very quick welcome to all of my new subscribers and a big thanks to everyone for the great comments and likes on my videos and an extra special thanks to my awesome Patreon supporters. If you want to join them supporting the channel you can check out my Patreon page there'll be a link in the description below. So now let's check out our cars set up on our old garage diorama. Thanks heaps for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share and subscribe.